Hello everyone. First of all, please be sure to like us on Facebook so you receive notifications when we post other educational videos such as this one. We have in-person educational events, DIY tips, valuable information through daily posts. So like us on Facebook and now we can move on to our topic today. Enrollment period. Now what? What can you do to make sure that your benefits reflect your situation in life, reflect the circumstances for this year. First of all, be sure to review the benefits packet. Review it in detail in order to determine if you need to increase, decrease, add or drop a benefit, you need to know what you're doing. If you have any questions about your benefits, please be sure to contact Human Resources. If they are not the ones who can help you, they can refer you to the right person. So here are some things to have in mind. Take stock of what you previously applied for. Don't just automatically um, renew what you have. Be sure to look, as we talked about, at every option and see if you need to modify it. Number two, as we talked about, review the list of all the benefits offered. It may be that there are some benefits out there that were not available last year, so you will not automatically be enrolled in those. They may be free or very uh, inexpensive. Some employers, for example, offer legal plans as part of the benefits, or they may offer additional sessions for mental health, or they may include a spouse or a child, so be sure to look on the list of benefits offered. Three, evaluate your medical, dental, vision. If you already have those benefits, make sure you don't need to make any changes to them. Make sure that your physicians are still in the network, the ones that you like. Check out long-term and short-term disability benefits. It is very likely that your employer already offers some one or maybe both benefits to a certain amount. You may have the option to increase that amount. You may have the option to add a spouse to be eligible for those benefits. Make sure you understand the difference between short-term and long-term, when is needed, how it works, just in case something happens. Be prepared and print out those documents and make sure your family will find them if the need arises. Life insurance. We cannot stress the importance of life insurance. Your employer may offer life insurance as part of your benefits packet. Look into it, see how much is the payout. Again, like with all others, ask if you can increase the payout, how much it would cost you to do so. If it's too much money, forget about it. But if it's not a whole lot and you can increase the payout by a lot, you may want to do that. Or uh, look and see, again, if you can add your spouse or your children for life insurance benefits. It's often less expensive to add to an existing policy than to start a new one. So be sure to look into life insurance options. Accidental death and dismemberment. That's a morbid topic, but be sure you check what options you have, when it applies, can you increase it, what can you do to make sure that you are better protected. Seven, reassess your retirement contributions. This may be a good time to do so. You should do that at least once a year. Ideally, you work with a financial advisor who can answer your questions, who can help you make these decisions. They have calculators, they understand how it all works. So if you don't already have a financial advisor, I encourage you to call around, ask your friends and family, ask us who we recommend. Many of them, if not all, offer free consultations where you can ask your questions, ask about their fee schedule and how they would charge you. But don't put the, the option away just because you don't trust or you don't know where to start. Look into your retirement funds. Finally, number eight, update beneficiaries. I've made many videos on this topic. It is important that you double check, triple check that you have beneficiaries listed on all your financial investments, life insurance, retirement, 401k, stocks, bank accounts have payable on death. Whatever type of, of financial asset you have, be sure you have beneficiaries listed and be sure that you also have alternate beneficiaries. Primary beneficiaries, alternate beneficiaries, if something were to happen to your primary, um, it'll go down to the second option. 
As it relates to estate planning and the beneficiary conversation, if you have minor children, or if you have kids who have special needs, or you have adults who are not good with handling money, you may want to consider having a trust as a beneficiary to some or all of these accounts, wherein you can provide for a gradual distribution, you can add protection, you can add conditions and terms on how the money to be uh, given to the beneficiary or how they should be spent, maybe pay a third party directly, Give us a call if you have any questions. We would love to help you with that. We offer free phone call consultations, 405-857-8231. Thank you for watching and be sure to share this video with your friends and family.